into business? Well, I mean, honestly, I mean, I don't want to make it a long story, but um, <laughs> really it was more of a, after I got done, done playing baseball, because that's, that's uh, what I play. I play baseball all the way until, until college. And then once I graduated, because I thought for sure I was going to make it to the pros and, uh, you know, I graduated my last year and I said, well, what do I do now? Um, so I try to yeah. try to make it. I try to I still try to make it in the pros, you know, after that, but it didn't work out. So I went and uh, tried to get a job. And, uh, you know, I spent probably about five, six years just working in a bunch of different companies. If I try to name all the companies that I used to work for, I mean, I wouldn't finish today. I mean, there was, <laughs> there were, yeah, there were a lot of companies. And so, yeah. but I, I, it was mainly the, the problem is that. It's not that I was irresponsible or anything like that. It was more of the fact that I, you know, I kind of didn't enjoy it, <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and so I just really wanted to look for something that, you know, I wanted to get up every morning. I actually, want to go do, yeah. And so eventually, I knew I wanted to go to some point, but I just didn't know where to get started. I didn't know where to go. So eventually, um, uh, to make a long story short, you know, I, out of all the jobs that I've done, you know, I was. I was not very good at any of them. <laughs> so I found out uh, my buddy had opened up a, uh, a facility. And uh, so at the time I was working the oil field and, you know, we, we used to work two weeks on and then they would give us a week off. Um, yeah. And so on that week off, I would try to do a couple of lessons here and there um, mm-hmm. to see how, how I would go. And then, you know, eventually I it got to the point where, you know, I got a little bit more, a little bit more. And so I was like, you know what, let me quit this oil field thing and then look for a full-time job that I could still the, do the lessons weekly in the evening. Yeah. Um, and then that's kind of how I took off. And then eventually I started doing it uh, full-time because I felt like I had more people than, uh, you know, than uh, basically make it a full, full-time job. So that's pretty much how I got started. Awesome. So tell us a bit about your, your training business then. What do you guys specialize in? Well, I work with hitters and, and uh, infielders, but uh, the, what I really try, I'm trying to grow the most is the, um, uh, the fielding side of it because um, I'm trying to do more camps. Uh, so lately I've been doing more camps nationwide, which obviously it's not easy. Uh, you know, it takes time because it takes time for people to trust you, but people to, um, you know, kind of continue to see your stuff. And I'm pretty big on social media. That's really how I've got my name out there. Not that you have to rely on social media, but for me, it's worked pretty well. So um, so that's what I specialize on, like hitting and fielding. But again, when I do camps, I try to focus more on the field inside of it. Yeah, awesome. So talk to us a little bit about how, how you took your business nationwide, because I know that's something a lot of coaches will be intrigued to know, how, how you do yeah. Yeah, it's a lot of, uh, I hate to say it, it was a lot of begging. <laughs> uh, yeah, a lot of asking around. And uh, it's not like they came and called me and they're like, hey, man, you're, you know, the uh, superstar. It wasn't that way. Uh, it was more of, hey, man, you know, I just, I kind of called around. I just, I would call Houston, I would call California. Uh, I would call, you know, Dallas or whatever. Uh, and so I would tell them pretty much who I was. And then so- sometimes people would be like, uh, I don't know about that. But um, as my social media started growing a little bit more, and honestly, I started doing uh, camps nationwide, even when I had like a couple of subscri- I mean, followers yeah. on Facebook. Facebook is really my biggest, uh, 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 that's where I use the, the most and where I get the most. Um, uh, Your biggest platform. Platform, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, so I just kind of asked them, you know, almost – doing it for free <laughs> but mm-hmm. not not free but basically i just wanted to just have enough to to break even because i wanted to make sure i get my name out there but that's pretty much what i was doing call calling just basically calling people just telling just selling myself and you know telling them that i what i do and um uh, that i would love to go out there and and honestly i mean i at first and i'm not saying that i'm at the point where i just got a crap lot of people just you know knocking on my door but but I feel like it's little by little taking off. But at first, I mean, I had like probably the first five <laughs> five camps they didn't make. You know, mm-hmm. I had one in Houston, didn't make. I had one in El Paso, Texas, didn't make. I had one in Las Vegas, didn't make. Um, and I had a couple other ones just didn't make. Because obviously people don't know you yet. But what I recommend people is just like, you know, just like Ben says, you got to be consistent. 
Yeah. Um, if not, then obviously, because it's pretty discouraging if you really want to do this, um, you know, and you don't get anybody signed up. That's uh, you're like, man, I don't know yeah. if I'm doing the right thing. But I just, I just stick with it, and that's so. Basically, going back to your question, that's what I did. I just yeah. call, call, and okay. then now people little by little will call me now, um, mm -hmm. and then so they set it up for me. Cool. So to be precise, who who exactly were you calling? So coaches? No. So, I'm, so I'm calling facilities. So like indoor facilities, mainly indoor facilities, because the only issue with uh, doing it outdoors that, you know, if it happens to rain or something, then, you know, now I have to cancel it or it's going to be a, a pain in the butt trying to find a facility or indoor facility to do it. So I just call indoor facilities. I start off with um, places like, um, you know, the, the sell memberships. Uh, yeah. because I know they, you know, they have better discounts for members and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's pretty much how I started. And then, and then, you know, a couple of organizations will call me and, and that's kind of how I got the ball rolling. Okay. Awesome. And when you, when you go to those facilities, who does the marketing and promoting for that event? I do, but they also help me out too. So they, they, uh, Every now and then, I'll work out a deal with them where I say, if you, if you know, if you get, you know, for every kid that you get me signed up, then you get this much. I mean, I don't give them a big portion because obviously they're gonna pay for the pay for the plane ticket or depending how far I'm, I'm going. Um, but for the most part, I do the marketing. Um, so I I, I blast it on social media. Uh, now, if I've been at that place already, like in Houston, what I do is just blast uh, emails to the people that I've that I've already been through my camps. Uh, and and what what's good about also the owners of the facility they have a list of um, uh, emails of the all the members and so so that helps quite a bit you know you're not gonna get everybody uh, especially if they don't know you but you know if you get a couple here and there I mean eventually it'll start to get the ball rolling and yeah that's kind of how, how I've been doing it. awesome so you you've obviously mentioned that you've you've worked with Ben and with our company already. Uh, so mm -hmm. talk to us a bit about uh, your obstacles. So what was your biggest obstacle before you started working working with us? Man, I was just doing too many one-on-one -on -one sessions. Uh, you know, that's all cool. But, you know, I got to a point where what I was telling you before that, you know, when I started taking taking out full time, um, you know, I had like 60 players uh, during the week. And I remember there was a time where I was doing early in the morning all the way until the evening. So it was pretty exhausting. But the other, the other obstacle, too, was that I wasn't charging it off. And, and it's not about ripping people off, but mm -hmm. you got to also know your value. And that's one thing that I learned from Ben, because it's not really that, you know, you, you, you got to make a living, too, right? Yeah. So and you got to know what you're worth. And so uh, that was my biggest obstacle, the uh, doing too many one-on-one -on -one sessions and just charging. I was literally charging sometimes. Um, well, when I talked to Ben, I was... There was some people that I was charging the regular price, but a lot of kids I was charging like ten bucks. Mm -hmm. And so, like you know, you, you, <laughs> what what I make? I mean, I'm not trying to sound arrogant, but what I make an hour now, it would take me a whole day uh, yeah. to make that much. What I make an hour now. Yeah. So, so, what's what's a little piece of advice you would give to a coach who who want, who is charging too little, who was in your position at the beginning and wants to charge more or change their program? What's something you would tell them to do? Well, obviously, like you said, the beginning you you can't be trying to charge, you know, you know, outrageous, you know, uh, uh, money. But but I think uh, eventually, uh, if people trust you, like you have to provide more value, and that's one thing that Ben talks about a, a lot. Like you can't you got you can't just do the same thing the next guy is doing. Um, you got to provide more. So what I do with with uh, my well now I, I people trust me now more because I've been doing it for a while. But you know, I try to provide. Uh, uh, to where they, I send them home with homework. Uh, I try to put together uh, little programs that they can follow at home. So basically the stuff that we do in lessons or the group sessions or even at the camps. So at the camps, I also give away. Um, and that's one thing that Ben told me that basically the, uh, the online program allows you to, uh, you know, um, it's almost like a, you offer more value to your customer right. because, uh, because at the camps, I give it away for free. Mm -hmm. um, so that comes with the, with the program. With the lessons, I, a lot of the kids that I work with, I gave them away for free. So now the stuff that we're working on in, in the sessions, they're going to be doing at home too. Yeah. Um, so, so it's not just them waiting you know, another week until they see me again 
to start all over again. So they, they got something to, to work on. Absolutely. So that, that's one of the things that I do. And then obviously, uh, I, when, when I first get them, like, you know, I send them home with homework mm -hmm. uh, because I, I got to make sure I see progress. Other way, otherwise, we're just taking these people's money and the kids are going nowhere. And the way I look at it, if, if the kids don't get any better, you, <laughs> you're not going to get any referrals. Uh, the, so so that's just so that that's 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 what i do and then um uh i always tell them which i wouldn't recommend this much but i tell them you know if if they get themselves on video at home or, or i'm sorry not home uh in games mm -hmm. to send it over to me uh yeah. but don't get too crazy about that because if you get too many kids then you get overloaded with a bunch mm -hmm. of videos they're like man like this too much but, but yeah <laughs> you so, start yeah. to feel like a school teacher right right Right. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. So when you when you were doing those 60 plus sessions per week, right, what, what was going through your head in terms of like a trainer? Did you feel like there has to be another way to do this? Or did you think like, do you know what? This is the norm in order to I, succeed? I, 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 I thought it was normal. It just I just didn't know any better. Uh, I, I didn't know anybody else that was doing it. Um, and, and I started in a small town. So I, I live in a small town in Oklahoma, uh, about 20 some thousand people. Yeah. And so you don't have anybody else doing it. Uh, the people that was doing it now, it's in the city, which is basically where I go to every day, um, yeah. uh, which is about an hour and 20 from here. But, but I just didn't know any better. And I thought that charging more, which is, you know, it was, it was a bad thing. But then I realized, you know, you still got to pay the facility. You still got to pay, you know, um, um, gas <laughs> to get there. And, and it's it just at the end of the week, you know, I, it was awesome because I was, I was like, man, I get all these people like, it's awesome. And like people, as many people trust me. But then at the end of the week, I'm like, well, I'm, you know, it doesn't, you know, I feel like I'm not making enough. Like, yeah. <laughs> again, you got to pay, pay your bills. And so that's, that's when I found out about Ben on, on YouTube. Uh, it start, I started looking up. I was like, well, I wonder if there's a guy out there that helps people out like me. And so luckily I found him and, and he reached out to me and uh, reached back to me. And then uh, he was the one that helped me actually open up my mind, not be so, you know, think so little. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. so yeah. Awesome. I don't so know where, if that you, question. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. Nice one. So where, where do you see this industry going in the next two to five years? Man, I don't see it going anywhere because to be honest, I mean, I feel like more and more people are looking for, uh, for personal trainers. Um, and I know, I know online, online sessions are pretty, pretty, uh, you know, they're, they work too, but I just feel like it's not the same when you, when you're there with the kids. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't know, I just feel like it's more and more people are joining uh, private sessions that really want that extra work. Uh, because back when I was younger, well, I, I didn't grow up here, but I just know that the parents that I, of the kids that I work with, they say that they didn't have much of this stuff. Like it was a lot, a lot of it was just like go out there, play and, you know, and just mm -hmm. tough, it, tough it out. Good luck. Yeah. So, yeah. So do you see it growing, expanding more? Yeah. Yeah, I yeah. do. I mean, I mean, man, baseball, like for me in baseball, I don't know how, I don't know what, what uh, you do soccer. Is that? Or, yeah. Or, or so yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so I don't know how soccer is, but baseball is like growing like crazy. Like, I mean, yeah. camps are like you got people that you know do camps like they get over a hundred people. Mm -hmm. uh, so that 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 tells me that that is growing. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. And so, so I I don't see it growing anywhere. I, I just think it's gonna continue to grow. Yeah, and more awesome. and more coaches are gonna join too. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So one thing, one thing we notice with a lot of baseball trainers is that they don't want to change the way that they're, they're coaching, right? A lot of them like to do the lessons and mm -hmm. they don't want to go into, into groups. Right. right. So what would be one thing you would tell a trainer who has that mindset that it's, it's all about lessons, 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 instead of doing groups, right? Because well, a lot of them think that they can't provide value when, when they're working in groups. Yeah, but but I get it too with the baseball coaches because when it comes to hitting, it could be pretty challenging. Um, now, when I do field, that's why I like to do field. I, I, I enjoy the heck out of uh, uh, field and like working with infielders. Yeah. But with infielders, you can get more people and keep them all engaged. When it comes to hitting, it's a little bit tougher because, you know, sometimes you've got people standing around. Yeah. Um, so what I, what I would try to do is try to up the price a little bit and then get them smaller groups. Um, because I know, because 
unless you have now, if you have other coaches that you can trust that can help you out, that's a different story. Because now you can grow more. Now you can actually have different stations. And but hitting is a pretty pretty challenging. Uh, um, uh, it's it's pretty challenging to try to keep a lot of people engaged. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I would still try to get them in groups. Um, I just wouldn't wouldn't get as many. But again, I would up the price. Now with fielding. You can get you know anywhere from I, I try to cap it out at six uh, six kids uh, per group because I feel like the quality stays very good there. After that, it kind of goes down. Now, if I feel like they're all the same level, yeah, then I go up to ten. Um, but you got to learn how to how to keep them all going because it's not just doing the groups. You got to keep them rolling. Yeah, because that's the problem. Like you do groups. Like I wish you could come to my sessions. Like they don't they're not standing around. Like if I'm even if I'm hitting the ball to them. All of, all of the other kids are working on the first step. So they're, they're working. I don't know how much you know about baseball, but they're working on their pre-pitch. So they're working like they're going to feel the ball. Yeah. But in reality, one person is feeling it. So everybody's working on that jump, and nobody's just standing around there and doing nothing because that drives me crazy. Yeah, 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 yeah. So you don't have to charge as much with fielding because you can get more kids in. Uh, and pitching is the same thing for guys that are doing pitching. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. pitching you can you can it's kind of the same as as, as hitting uh, yeah well i say that but you can actually get more kids maybe mm-hmm. six kids in for pitching, in pitching so, yeah awesome like that yeah but go, going back i don't mean to interrupt but going back That's to what right. you said the one-on-one like yeah you gotta get you gotta get away it just you either have to charge a premium and i hate to say this because it sounds like we're ripping people off mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. but you gotta if you want to grow you gotta be able to get get away from that from the, the from the individual, yeah, because yeah. it'll wear you out pretty quick, and you can only go so far with it. Because it's only so many hours in the evening, correct? Uh, to correct. do lessons, so yeah. And I remember when 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 I was doing a lot of coaching. So I was in similar to your position. I was doing about twenty to thirty one to one sessions per week. Uh, in soccer and I remember it got to Sunday and I was exhausted and I'm there think- in my head I'm thinking I've got to do this again next week <laughs> yeah. um, so that's when the moment I said you know what I can't continue this because if I continue it I'm going to get burnt out and then I'm going to just hate what I'm doing right. and I'm going to quit so a little bit it was like right what's what's the other way I can do this but also, I was a little bit arrogant because I thought this this must be the norm. Mm-hmm. Um, so I like that's that's great information, and I can completely um, relate to your to your story at the beginning. Um, yeah. So, what's your current uh, sales and marketing process? How are you How are you gaining new clients into your program? Well, uh, uh, and I'm not trying to sound arrogant, but. Um... At the beginning, obviously, it was a lot of free lessons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but now I get to where a lot of people, uh, you know, I get a lot of referrals. Uh, and that and that's what I would do. Like, if you're just starting off, just don't be afraid to ask for referrals. Obviously, you still got to do a good job. Don't just be a, don't do a sloppy job and expect to get 100 people in return. Um, but you got to really do a good job. And social media nowadays, I mean, there's so much information out there. Mm-hmm. Um, but... Um, I lost I lost the um, what I was trying to tell you there. Apologize. So, so, social media. Yeah, social media. So that's what I yeah. what I use the most. Um, I uh, Facebook and Instagram mainly Facebook. That's where I really push it hard. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but I also like if I'm doing camps, I I start sending out a bunch of emails to uh, mm-hmm. to all the people that came to my camps. Uh, but again, I don't have to worry about getting, I mean, it's pretty rare when I'm looking for, uh, to fill up my groups, uh, sessions when I put, uh, post it on social media, it's more for camps. So, yeah. so, so, so going back to your question, I don't have to really, uh, uh, do as much marketing, yeah. but at first that's what I did. I asked for a lot of referrals and that's one thing that Ben would tell me, uh, you know, you, you gotta ask for referrals because mm-hmm. otherwise people think you're okay and. And, and, and people want to help you out too, by the way, like, cause you got to think if you're not in business, then you're not going to be able to help their kids out. So that's right. the way I look at it. So they want to keep you in business so you can help their kids out too. So, and be honest with, with the parents because they want to help you out. Correct. So talk, talk to us a little bit about your process when you get new clients through social media. So once the parent reaches out to you, what's the next step you take? Well, um, 
I used to do it like the way Ben was doing, uh, would have me do it before where we get on a call uh, with them. I still get on a call with them. But now I have them send me a video of them when they when they were playing when if they're playing um, a video of them playing in, in a game, and okay. so so like so that helps me quite a bit. So I, I, right away I can tell like what kind of player that is. So so I know I do that, or I just tell them, hey, can you you want to come from a thirty minute session? That way I can kind of see where he where he's at or she's at, and then mm -hmm. uh, and then see what group he fits the, the best. Um, okay. But that but that's the way I've been doing it, uh, even though the Getting on a call, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty good too. Okay, awesome. So, Moy, yeah. talk to us. Where where do you see your business in the next five years from now? Man, I'm really, I'm really hoping. I'm pretty, uh, I'm trying to stay real positive that this uh, camps will take off. Um, the only thing in this, what Ben used to tell me, he said, "You got to get away from coaching teams," and I did, and then I got right back to it. I don't know why the <laughs> heck I kept doing it. Uh, that's that's my biggest uh, uh, weakness, I guess, because I feel bad because I see so many bad coaches out there. I'm like, I really want to help out these kids, and yeah, yeah. and sometimes it takes you away from uh, from from lessons. So that's why it's hard for me to grow my camps more and more. But I think I think after this summer, I'm gonna shut it down with the coaching uh, teams. Mm -hmm. So I want to really grow my camps and go nationwide and not do so much. Like maybe do one or two or two times a week uh, lessons, like group lessons. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, I want to be able to continue to grow my my camps because that's always been my kind of my, my excuse me my uh, my dream there to be able to grow nationwide with my camps. That's awesome. Cool. Mm -hmm. Awesome, Moy. So, well, thank you for for jumping on and yeah. sharing us a bit about your your journey, your business. Um, it's been inspiring. Now, yeah. if any coach wants to reach out to you or follow your journey with your business, what's the best way they can do that? Well, go to Moy Style Baseball. Uh, you can go to uh, Moy Style Baseball on uh, on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter. Twitter, I hardly ever get on, but um, but I still post there too. Um, and then you also you can also reach uh, reach out to me on my email, Moy Style three three at gmail dot com. Awesome. What we'll do, we'll put that at the the bottom of the video so people can re reach out or follow you there. Right. Okay. Awesome. Appreciate you, man. Awesome, boy. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you again. And look forward to catching up in the next future. Awesome. Bye. Thanks a lot, man. See you later. All right. Bye.